Okay, I've got all kinds of stuff I want to do today. Um, I, we're going to bind a book today, but I also want to show you this. I made this the other day. This is for a fundraiser for a friend. I can get it all in there. There we go. And it's just a weird little collage thing. Um, <clears throat> for a friend who's having a fundraiser, her son is a teenager, and he has these um, uncontrollable seizures, epileptic seizures. And he'll be going to college in a couple of years and really needs a service dog to be able to do that. And those things are, like, super expensive, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 at least for a service dog. But that's, um, you know, they have dogs that are trained to be able to uh, determine when a seizure is about to happen so that, you know, they can alert him and that would, you know, it's just really important for him to have that to be able to go to college and be independent. So they're doing a fundraiser and part of that is a silent auction and they're having an event here in Houston on Sunday. I'll put a link down in the video description so you can go check that out. Um, you can donate if you're inspired. It's, um, you know, you're donating to an individual, so it's not a tax deduction. It would be a, a true gift. <laughs> you know, you would get no, no benefit in return. But if you are looking for some, you know, you want to help someone out, you want to give, especially during the holidays, um, you know, there's an option for you because it's someone that I do know personally. And so, you know, you don't have to worry that your money is going to, you know, who knows where it, it, it is going to this young man who has this real need. So um, there is an option for that. But anyway, I just made this collage, well, more like an assemblage deal, I guess. It was on a piece of clay board that I don't know where I got. Maybe my sister gave this to me. I'm not real sure. But it was perfect for this because this is all metal. Um, mostly all metal and very heavy. This would not work on a canvas. But it was just a um, kind of a collaged background with some different papers and textures and stuff and borders and junk and pieces of found metal objects and hardware and some jewelry pieces that I've made. Some are covered in resin and it just, it made me think of, um, and in thinking about this young man particularly, about how sometimes when um, life just seems to give you a lot of difficulties, you know, it's sort of a, a little faucet knob, and I just imagined the junk that pours out on top of us. So it just sometimes seems like it's just one trial after another. But if you look very closely, there are little there are little jewels in those trials. There is always something good that comes out of the bad. So that's kind of what this meant to me is um, just kind of a reminder to look look for the treasures in the trash of your life, basically. That's, that was just kind of the, the idea that was going through my head when I made it. So, anyway, that is for the silent auction to um, raise money for Henry's service dog. So, I hope that someone will, you know, give at least 10 bucks for it or something. I don't know. You know, anything would be helpful, but there you go. <laughs> that was fun to, to uh, work on. Okay, now, next thing that I just feel the need to do um, right now, you know, it's more important than house cleaning, which is what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel like I need to work on my journal for the Book of Days class. I've signed up for um, Effie Wilde's Book of Days thing that she does. I think she does every year, starting in January. And um, so I thought I would give that a try this year. Before the class starts, she sends you the um, links to her boot camp workshop, um, which is kind of a getting ready for the book of days type deal and, and you know it has all the videos you can download and watch at your own pace and she talks about the supplies that you'll need and the kind of journals you can use and then she walks you through how she makes her journals that she uses in the workshop. So I watched all of the um, boot camp videos and I decided I would make my own journal. It's one of those you know you can make it, you can buy it, whatever. I decided to make my journal 
cover, anyway, out of this piece of canvas that I got in some Happy Mail recently. And it was just a piece of um, a primed plain white canvas. And I cut it down. And um, for my signatures, I think Effie used five in her video, so that's what I used. I've got five signatures to go in my cover, and she recommended watercolor paper, and I had like two or three different kinds. So, and my signatures, I don't, I don't think mine have as many pages as hers. I'm not really sure. I just use what I had. This is what I had. So I've got like one, one type of, and this is actually probably more of a canvas paper rather than watercolor. This is a watercolor paper. This is a um, mixed media paper right there, and. You know, that's my little signature. So there we go. I can always tip in if I want more pages, but I didn't want to have so many blank pages that it got to be overwhelming because I have a real hard time with that whole, you know, white page syndrome that I just get overwhelmed and can't even get started. Here's what I thought I would do. I wanted to do the inside with, um, I thought I would collage on some torn up bits of these paper towels that I use when I'm painting, you know, and I keep these, so I pulled out several and collaged them on, and I thought, okay, I'll use that for the inside, and then I won't decorate the outside because, you know, it's an art journal. It's going to get all narfed up as I'm working in it, so I'll just wait. I'll maybe do that at the end, but here's what happened. I collaged on all of the bits of paper towels, and then I fell in love with it. <laughs> I really, really love the way it turned out. So I, I just flipped it over and decided to make this the outside. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's going to get paint and, and grunge on it, but it's already so, you know, um, busy and, and colorful that I think all the smudges are just going to blend right in. So all I did was tear my paper towels up into chunks and mod podge them on there. And that's it. I went around the edge with this kind of a dark blue pit pen, kind of smudged it. And then I did put some uh, Daddy Vans wax on it so that it wouldn't stick to itself. You know how Mod Podge can sometimes do that. So I'm loving the way this turned out. So this is going to be, it was supposed to be my inside, but I've decided it's going to be my outside, which means I now need to do something on the inside. And since the um, paper towels and the Mod Podge did add some, some weight to the canvas, you know, it made it more, uh, a little stiffer, then I don't want anything to, on the inside to make it, any stiffer than it already is because it's just perfect right now just perfect to hold its shape but I don't want it to start to get difficult to I want it to be kind of soft so I thought I would just paint on the inside just smudge smear paint everywhere and I've got my um, drop paper here is just a piece of freezer paper with some strips of tape on it that I sometimes paint over and then you know when they get all painty and wonderful I peel them off and then there's my homemade washi tape so this is where I'm going if you see right here I don't know if you can tell I've got a seam right there and what that was is um, I had to trim this piece of canvas I just had one you know and it was quite a bit um, wider or taller than I needed needed it to be so I had to trim it off this way but I wanted to put lots of space in between each signature and I've already kind of marked I don't know if you can see that but I actually just creased lines where each signature will be so that I could tell how much of an overlap I needed and it was a little short you can see right there see these are going to go in like this and this is where it ended and it was a little you know it came to about right there and I was afraid that as the book got fatter that I was going to have a problem closing it so what I did was I took that strip that I cut off this way and I put it right here and there's actually just a piece of duct tape right here and I can see the line 
of the duct tape right there. I don't know if you can. I can see it probably because I know it's there. But remember, this was supposed to be the inside. So that's why I put the duct tape here and then the paper over it because I thought this was going to be the inside. It ended up being the outside. But it's fine anyway because I don't think you can see the duct tape lines. But that's all I did. Duct tape. The, this piece right up against the edge of this piece taped them together and then I think I might have put a little glue or something over it some Mod Podge just to seal it down good so that that made it longer this way so I have plenty of overlap for my cover so um, let me get this painted and then we're going to bind it, and I've already figured out how I want the binding. I'm going to do it a little bit different than Effie does. Um, she uses kind of a, a long stitch, but um, and I'm going to use a long stitch as well, but just a little bit different, and I'll show you how. But first of all, let's just paint. the inside of my cover is now finished and I am again to that point where <laughs> I like the inside well enough to want it to be the outside because <laughs> look I think that would be very nice what do I do I don't know but you know what I think I should probably keep the texture on the outside so I am yeah, I am going to go ahead and make that the outside, and this the inside, but I really, really do love the way this turned out. It was touch and go there for a while. I was thinking, okay, this is not, not coming together like I wanted. The first colors I started off with were too light, so I darkened it up. <clears throat> and then um, removed some of the <clears throat> color to give it a little bit of a grungy look underneath. And finally, it came together. So, yay. Perseverance pays off. Alright, so now let's just get this thing bound and done. Um, fortunately, I can still see my lines that I made, so I'm in good shape. And if you watch Effie's videos when she binds her journals, she doesn't measure, you know, she folds them over, she eyeballs it, she pokes holes, you know, doesn't, um, she's not real precise, which is perfectly fine. You know, if the whole measuring precise thing drives you crazy, don't do it. 
So here's what I want to do. I decided I wanted to do a long stitch. And Effie does hers where she binds each signature individually. She, you know, cuts the string, sews it in, and ties it off, and then goes to the next one and does them one by one, which is fine. Nothing at all wrong with that. I think I would rather do mine um, in just one continuous thing without having to tie off for each signature. So that's what I'm going to do. And I looked through, I was looking through this book for some inspiration. I love this book. And I, I refer to it a lot because I always find something in there. It's called Rebound. Creating Handmade Books from Recycled and Repurposed Materials by Janine Stein. And in here she's got tons of ideas. I mean, not just for, you know, book contents and construction, you know, with all the different found objects and stuff. And, and she has some really cool cover ideas. But she also has really clear binding instructions for each one. And she even gives templates in the back that you can print out. She tells you, copy it 100%, or she'll tell you, you know, this one, copy it 200%, so that it'll be just the right size to use if you want to try to duplicate her projects. And then she has a little gallery in the back of some artist books from other people that are really kind of cool. Look at this one. It's smushed cans and then can tabs for the covers, which I think is just great. So anyway, I was looking through here, and I spied this book for, this is a felt, felted sweater journal. My book is not felted nor made from a sweater, but that's okay. I liked her long stitch that she used on here. And there's not really, okay, you can kind of see the picture. She's got the long stitches down the spine and then on the cross, you know, long stitch usually has the, the cross stitches at the top. She put buttons in, which I'm, I don't think that I want buttons in mine, but I don't know, I might put something. But see, here's the thing. She has, her book has six signatures. Mine has five. It does make a difference because of these little holes at the top. Um, so I'm going to have to kind of figure that out when I get to that point, but that's okay because, you know, we'll figure it out. And, you know, like I always say, if you're not quite sure how to work something out, make a little prototype. So I did. I got some, I have some scrap. These are like, you know, anytime I bind a book, there's always some little scrap ends that you cut off. Well, I keep them and then I tie them together and then I have this needle that's, knotted in there and that's my like prototype string that I use to try to figure out bindings and I did this one I just got some scrap paper poked some holes started running the binding and then I think that I can make it work with an odd number of signatures instead of even my little end stitches here will look different than hers but it'll work so that's what this is I made this template for the holes for each signature and I just kind of um, looked at it and figured out where I wanted the holes to be. I need four for this particular binding and the only thing I had to do, I had to make sure that these two center holes were going to go through my inclusion. So normally I would put this, this one up here a little closer to that one. But I had to move it down so that it would catch the inclusion. And then I just used this template to punch each signature. And I always mark my signatures. I put just a little pencil mark at the top and a little pencil mark at the top of the template. Because I don't care how precise you measure, if you accidentally flip it, your holes are going to be off. Okay, you don't have to have a book cradle. I just happen to have one, so I use it to punch. Lay my signature in here, lay my little template in there, and then just poke straight down with a pokey tool or an awl or whatever. And there's my holes. And I've already done my other ones. So. 
and they're all lined up all nice and even and I don't even know if you can see all I see is glare anyway just trust me they're there I think I'm going to use this I have this kind of blue colored wax linen and uh, it kind of goes with the cover okay so where's the end found it all right I think I'm gonna measure I don't know one two three four five do six just to be on the safe side. Six lengths for my five signatures. And I'm going to need a needle. I'm just going to use a regular uh, book binding needle. It's blunt on the end. Tapestry needle will work fine. in there. Okay. Now before I start sewing in my signatures, I want to punch my cover too. All I want to do, I'm going to lay this here and I have these lines where each signature is going to go and I'm just going to punch this is the top. Make sure that I've got it right. Yes. And I'm just going to kind of pre-punch my holes so that when I start adding my signatures, I'll know where to go. Kind of line it up. Mm, that looks about right. And there's my crease line right there. So, poke a hole. Come down. I'm still on my crease line. Got my guide holes punched. So now I can start sewing. Okay, first signature, start in the front, work to the back. And I know you can't see it because I can barely see it, but there's my guide hole right there. found it. <laughs> okay. I'm glad I used a book needle instead of a, a tapestry needle. They have a little sharp on the end. Alright. I'm going to leave a fairly long tail since I may have to do some rigging at the end. I need longer than that. There we go. Leave it like that. And I'm going to stick it underneath this clip just to hold it in place while I sew. Alright, we came up through the outside. Now we're going to go down through the inside. You might have to just kind of wiggle it around until you find all your holes. Pull it tight every time. Not so tight that it tears your pages, but you do want it snug. Okay, find the next one. whole new hole, but that's okay. We got it. It's all good. We got it. 
Those holes were just guidelines. You know, you can improvise. Okay, there's our first one. Now, what we're going to do is get, and I am going to, okay, I'll stay put. We still got that one? Yep. All right, get my next signature. Check for the top. Make sure, yep, top to top. Now, here's where my thread is, so I'm going to go over to this next hole, which I can kind of see is right, ouch, right there, and then in through the signature. So you can see how this is going to go, right? See, it makes a little, oh, <laughs> okay. Could that be more crooked? I don't think so. <laughs> you know what? I'm okay with it. <laughs> okay, so much for measuring. All right. Now you just work your way down here. When you come out this end, you go across to the next one, go back in, and you just keep going like that. Really easy. It's really almost just kind of intuitive. In, out, in, out, in, out. why you leave your long tail so we can come back and sew those in right so that's all we're gonna do we're just gonna go in through this one and here's the trick for this you don't want to go inside the signature you just want to catch the cover not the signature so you go in this hole and see, I'm just in the cover, not coming in through the signature, just the cover. Just like that. And then, go to the next one. Careful not to split your threads. This next one, that's the one I made the new hole on, wasn't it? I think so. Oh, yeah, because, <laughs> yeah, look at all kinds of weirdness happening right there.
Okay, where was I? Around this one. And not here. Oh wait. No. We're done. That's one, two, three, four. Okay. So at this point I can tie off on the inside. You can do it on the inside or the outside. I want mine on the inside. Because I can always go in if I want danglies, I can tie things to these little duallies. So Go around this and just make a knot. Actually, I'm going to make a couple. Tie that off, cut it, go to this one, put my needle back on this tail, and then we're just going to do the same thing, go back and fill in our gaps. Okay. Now, got to fill in that gap, so go in this hole. <clears throat> Stay in the cover, not the signature. And just kind of move it around like that so that you can go up through the next hole. Maybe. Here it is. And then down through that one. And we got our four across. And let's tie this off. And we done. Well, I will put some kind of a closure on it. I don't know. It seems like Effie had, um, she did just a wrap around hers, maybe a ribbon or something. And I don't know if I'll do that or if I'll put some kind of closure or something. But um, I really like this. I like the way it turned out. I like the look of the long stitches. I like these things across here because I can hang stuff from them or not. Gosh, all I have to do now is wait. You know, the, one of the few times I do something early instead of waiting until the very last minute, and now look, I just have to sit back and wait. That's why procrastinating is sometimes really good, because then you don't have that problem. So, should have known. So that's it. That's my journal for Book of Days. Um, I probably won't film every single page that I do in it, but I'll do some of them. Um, just depends on what mood I'm in, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, the end.